Welcome to another deep dive. This time we're heading into uh, the unsettling world of the Cthulhu mythos. Yeah, it's a deep one, all right. And uh, we're exploring a really interesting source today, a transcript actually from a YouTube video um, called The Call of Cthulhu Full A.L. Bumem. It's by Mighty W Productions. So this isn't like a regular Lovecraft story then, is it? This is different. Yeah, it's definitely different. Um, instead of like a straightforward narrative, we've got this kind of like <gasps> collection of evocative phrases uh. and images, almost um, like incantations, I guess you could say, or like little glimpses yeah. <laughs> into a, a disturbed mind, maybe. Yeah, I noticed that right away. Like even the first few lines mm. um, mentioned mind shadows and dreams yeah. and this constant like searching for a sign, what do you think they're looking for? You know what's interesting? The transcript doesn't really say. It's like the source material itself is shrouded in mystery. Wet. Yeah. There are a lot of words like night, dark, and shadows, which all that suggests we're dealing with. You know, hidden knowledge, something lurking, just beyond our perception, which is a real key element, I think, of cosmic horror. Yeah, it's like we're being given fragments of a nightmare or something. And then there are these names, like they just drop them. Cthulhu, ancient gods, whispering mm -hmm. shadows. Who are these entities, and why should we be afraid of them? Well, that's where it gets really interesting. The transcript doesn't give us a like a neat biography or anything like that of who's who, but yeah. the way that these names are presented, it's almost like reverently it implies, mm -hmm. like immense power and a real serious threat to humanity. This isn't just some like typical ghost story, you know, we're talking about yeah. being so ancient and vast that they really challenge our understanding of reality. Right. And the descriptions that follow, right. like rising for the deep, stars aligning, sanity breaking, it's all so yeah. apocalyptic. Exactly. It really The language really evokes a sense of overwhelming scale. Yeah. You know, it's not just about like personal fear. It's about the potential collapse of everything we know. The transcript really wants us to feel, you know, how small humanity is against these forces. I was really struck by this, this mention of pages found in blood and bone and these neonic calls. It sounds ritualistic. What do you think's going on there? Oh, yeah. Good observation. Those details really suggest a connection between forbidding knowledge and summoning, you know, these beings. Neonic seems like. Maybe a misspelling of Necronomicon. That's a fictional thing. Grimoire, uh, which is just a fancy word for a book of magic that's featured in lots of, you know, Cthulhu mythos stories. Uh, so this isn't just cosmic dread we're talking about. It's humans mm -hmm. actively seeking contact with these entities, maybe through these forbidden texts. Right. And the Necronomicon, if that is what's involved here, well, things usually don't end well. The pursuit of that knowledge in Lovecraft world, it often leads to madness or even worse. Okay. So we've got <laughs> these ancient and powerful beings, hidden knowledge that humans are trying to get access to. And this sense of an apocalypse coming. There's also this idea that comes up again and again, this idea of destiny and awakening. Does that mean something big is about to happen? That's one of the unsettling things about the mythos. It plays on this feeling of inevitability. Like there's some shift coming, some cosmic shift and we can't stop it. Awakening and destiny, they really create an atmosphere of impending doom. And then, then there's a part that mentions a truthful president and a reign of terror. It's interesting because it blends real world stuff with supernatural elements. Exactly. That's one way that the mythos stays relevant, I think. Where, it takes right? our fears. Yeah. In this case, it could be about like political instability or ah, yeah. you know, societal collapse yeah. and amplifies them through this cosmic lens. What like, the transcript is saying is that yeah. the horrors we imagine aren't limited to fiction. They could be right under the surface of our reality, just waiting for the right moment to break through. Yeah, that's a chilling thought. And that's a thought that Lovecraft returned to a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fragility of our world. The idea that order can just be shattered. That's a recurring theme in his work, for sure. This one line that really got to me. The whisper of his name, a lost and cosmic threat. It's so cryptic, but also scary. Who is he? What kind of threat are we talking about? That line, it's just so effective at creating dread. It suggests that. Even saying a name can have consequences that some knowledge is just too dangerous to know. Lost in cosmic threat really emphasizes the scale we're dealing with here. This isn't a threat to one person or even to humanity. This could disrupt the fabric of existence. That makes you wonder if yeah. maybe knowing too much or asking the wrong questions could be the end of us. Absolutely, yeah. The mythos is full of characters who dig into forbidden knowledge and end up regretting it. There's this sense that some truths are just better left 
buries. Later on, the transcript describes this being as a gatekeeper of the round alone and someone who whispers truth in the darkness. Those phrases, it's like they contradict each other. What do you make of that? What's interesting there is how those lines hint at a being that exists outside of our normal understanding of time and space. Gatekeepers of the round alone, that suggests a guardian. Someone who is alone, maybe watching over, a boundary between worlds or dimensions. But then whispering truth in the darkness implies a temptation, a temptation to seek out that knowledge, forbidden knowledge. So this entity might have the keys to understanding the universe, but at a terrible cost. Exactly, yeah. That comes up a lot in Lovecraft, that the pursuit of knowledge often leads to madness and destruction. Like some things are just not meant for us to understand. Like peering into the mind of God mm. and realizing the sight would drive you mad. That's a powerful way to put it. The transcript seems to be saying that encountering this being, even hearing its name, could just shatter our reality. It's like, ah, the ultimate cosmic horror, mm -hmm. a force that we just can't understand and that threatens our sanity. So we're back and uh, still trying to unpack this wild transcript. Yeah, before the break, we were talking about how this transcript really emphasizes that our reality is fragile and that there are these beings that are just way more powerful than we can imagine. It really does. It makes you think differently about things. The transcript also has all these astronomical references, you know, yeah. really emphasizing that cosmic scale, like how stars aligning is mentioned over and over again. Something big is going to happen and it might not be good. It's like the whole universe is working against us. <laughs> and that line, eyes that watch from the face so near. So creepy. Oh, yeah, totally. That image of being watched by something you can't even see. It's like a primal fear, you know. We're not alone out there, but maybe we should be because whatever else is out there doesn't seem very friendly. It's a classic cosmic horror, though, isn't it? Just feeling like you're being watched, but you don't know by what. And you can't even understand it if you could see it. And then there's this whole part about decision and how shadows and the lighting darkness offer freedom mm. in a world where time stands still. Mm -hmm. Is it really a choice, though, if the only other option is something you can't even imagine? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. It seems like the transcript is saying you should just give up to these forces, embrace the darkness. But that freedom it talks about, it might cost you your humanity. It's disturbing. But Lovecraft wrote about that a lot, how powerless we are against these forces. Like if you're on a sinking ship mm -hmm. and someone throws you a life preserver, but they're throwing you toward a hurricane. Sure, you're escaping one threat, but you're facing something much worse. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. And the transcript just keeps building up this sense of doom with lines like, from the death of chaos and whispers of fate echo salvation. So maybe there's some kind of rebirth, but it's twisted. So it's not just the end of everything, and it's the start of something new mm -hmm. that we just can't understand. What would that even look like, though? Would there even be humans anymore? Well, that's the question, isn't it? The Cthulhu mythos. It doesn't like give you easy answers. It makes you face the fact that the universe is huge and we're just a tiny part of it. Yeah. And that we might not even matter in the grand scheme of things. You know what I noticed? This transcript keeps using the same phrases over and over, like it's trying to hypnotize you or something. Rising from the deep, stars aligning, and sanity breaking, like a broken record stuck on doom. You're right. Repetition can be a powerful tool. In this case, it just pulls you deeper into the horror. Those phrases almost sound like warnings or even prophecies like it's unavoidable whatever it is it's coming like the transcript is trying to warn us about something we can't understand to get ready for it yeah and maybe even deeper than that it's about how existence just keeps repeating creation and destruction endings and beginnings but those new beginnings might not be a good thing at all there's so much imagery about darkness and shadows hidden oh. knowledge like it's saying there are some truths that are better left alone yeah Forbidden knowledge, that's a major theme in the mythos. The idea that there are truths about the universe that would break your mind if you ever really understood them. Like looking at God and the power of it would just destroy you instantly. Exactly. The transcript seems to be saying the human mind just wasn't meant to understand the cosmos, that we should just stay ignorant and happy in our little corner of the universe. And yet we keep searching, trying to understand more, even if it means we go crazy or even die. We just can't help ourselves. Yeah, that's what it means to be human, right? We want to know. We want to understand, even if that understanding destroys us. It's a theme you see everywhere in literature and philosophy. But the mythos really takes it to an extreme. And there's the pages found in Blood and Bone and those neonic calls. We were talking earlier about the Necronomicon. Good. But it also sounds like people are going out looking for this dangerous knowledge. 
like trying that. to summon these entities. Right. So it's not just watching these horrors happen or be afraid of them. Humans are making choices. Maybe those choices are driven by ego or curiosity. But they're still choices. It's like we're causing our own destruction by uh -huh. needing to know everything. That's a really scary thought, isn't it? Are we really in control? Or are we just pawns in some cosmic game and we can't even understand the players or the rules? It's interesting, too, how this transcript mixes cosmic horror and a political thriller. We were talking about that truthful president before, but there's that line about a reign of terror, too. It's like it's saying the mythos isn't just about these otherworldly beings. It's about how humans can be just as bad corrupt. That's a really good point. Yeah. The transcript doesn't shy away from that. The dark side of human nature, you know, how well, power corrupts, how even good intentions can lead to something terrible. The transcript might even be saying that. The scariest thing isn't the unknown, it's us. Like the mythos is just a metaphor for all the ways we can mess up, how we can give in to our worst impulses. And it's not just about individuals either, it's about society. The transcript talks about the world falling apart, institutions crumbling, the end of reality. A scary thought to realize that we might destroy ourselves. Yeah. That maybe some monster from space isn't what will end us. Absolutely. And that brings us back to choices. Even with all these forces we can't control, even when the world is falling apart, we still have to choose how to respond, how to face the darkness. Do those choices even matter, though, if the universe is ruled by chaos and gods who don't even care about us? That's the question. It's what the mythos makes you think about. There are no easy answers. You have to face how little we understand, how fragile our existence is. Well, we're back for the last part of our deep dive into the Cthulhu mythos. We've covered a lot of ground, haven't we? Ancient beings, forbidden knowledge, the idea that reality could just fall apart, and even, you know, the end of humanity. It's been a pretty dark journey so far. One thing I keep thinking about is that idea of choice. The transcript keeps coming back to that. Like, there's a decision to make when facing these forces. You're right, yeah. It's not just about watching these things happen and being scared. The transcript seems to offer a way out, but it'll cost you. There are those lines about embracing the darkness, and becoming one with the chaos, it sounds like. Giving up, yeah. but also like yeah. some kind of messed up evolution. Yeah, exactly. It's like, the only way to survive is to become the horror, to lose your humanity, embrace something alien. A chilling thought. But also, <laughs> kind of fascinating. What would that even be like? Would we still be ourselves? That's the thing. The transcript doesn't really say, but it does talk about merging with something ancient, losing the boundaries between you and the cosmos. It's scary, but there's also this weird pull to it, you know? It's like the myth of Icarus, flying too close to the sun and getting burned. But instead, it's diving into darkness hmm. and losing yourself. That's a good way to put it. The transcript is like a warning about what happens when you want to know too much, when you try to control things you shouldn't. It's a story about how the unknown can be tempting, but it might destroy you. There's this feeling, too. Like something big is about to happen. We talked about awakening before. But it's more than that. It's like the whole universe is waiting. Yeah, I know what you mean. The transcript uses phrases like stars aligning and the time is drawing near. It makes it feel like it's going to happen no matter what. Like the universe is changing and we're just stuck in the middle of it. And then what will happen to us when it does? Will we be destroyed or will we adapt? It's hard to say, but the transcript mentions a transformation. Remember that part we talked about before? Yeah. That sounded like some kind of ritual, a merging of the human and the cosmic. Yeah, the one with all the strange imagery, like casting shadow blooms and sharing breath. It was tough to figure out, but it definitely sounded like some kind of metamorphosis. Right. It's like the transcript is saying, if you want to survive, you have to change become something new, something more like these cosmic forces. Whether that's good or bad, well, mm. you have to decide that for yourself. It's both scary and exciting to think about going beyond what it means to be human, to become something we can't even imagine now. That's the power of the Cthulhu mythos, isn't it? It makes you question everything you think you know about what it means to be human, about where we fit in the universe. It shows you how huge the cosmos is and how little we understand it. Wow. And it makes you face the fact that we're all going to die someday. <laughs> Which is all pretty disturbing. But there's also this strange beauty to it. The language the transcript uses, it's almost hypnotic. That's the funny thing about Cosmic Horror. It's terrifying, but it's also amazing. It reminds us that we're not in control, that there are things out there we just can't understand and that our reality is just a tiny part of something much bigger and more complicated. 
It's like staring into the abyss and realizing it's staring back. And instead of looking away, you're drawn to it. You want to know more about the mystery, the terror, the beauty. So we've reached the end of our deep dive into the Cthulhu mythos. What are your final thoughts? What do you hope people listening will take away from this? I think this transcript gives us a really interesting take on the mythos. It's not just about monsters and madness. It's about choices, evolution, what it means to be human in a universe that might be a lot stranger and scarier than we think. It reminds us that maybe the things we should really fear aren't out in space, but inside us our potential to destroy ourselves, and our desire to understand the unknown, even if it destroys us. It makes you think differently, question everything, and I think it also encourages you to embrace the mystery and the wonder of the cosmos, even when it's scary. Definitely a lot to think about. If this exploration into the Cthulhu mythos has gotten you curious, well, we encourage you to check out the works of H.P. Lovecraft. See what unsettling truths you can uncover. And don't forget, sometimes the scariest monsters are the ones we make ourselves. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. Until next time, keep looking up at the stars, but be careful what you wish for.